tools, we are going to look at data security and control. I do remember in Form 1, we looked at what is data, and we say that data are all facts. So, here you want to protect the data that you have, uh, or you have input data in the computer, and uh, this data will have some challenges as we are going to see. And that's where we have now the data security measures. So, in this topic, under the introduction, we are going to see what is data security. So, data security is the protection of data and information from accidental or intentional disclosure to unauthorized persons. It is the protection of data. from accidental or intention disclosure so when we say uh, accidental, this one means at time somebody might access your data without their, their, their uh, knowledge or without knowing. So it is accidental. Somebody might not be having the intentions to view what is in your computer, but accidentally they get the information. Other people will do it deliberately, and that's what we are saying intention. We need the deliberately. Now, we want to see which are these threats or uh, insecurity. What are we securing from? So, security threats to data. And the first one is computer biases. So, security threats number one, computer biases. This is not the first time that you are hearing of a virus. In computer and uh, we are going to see what is this virus what causes the virus and the ways of protecting the computers from the viruses so computer virus is a destructive program actually it is a software most of them are developed by software uh, people deliberately so this one mostly the viruses are intentional you find that under viruses there is an intentional disclosure the person getting information has the knowledge you know that he is developing this program in order to destroy or to get information to access your computer. So computer virus, as I say, it's a destructive program that attaches itself to other files. So it becomes as a program and it will attach itself to your, to your files or other programs in your computer. So virus is a computer code. So it, is, it has been coded by a program. So the person developing a virus has the knowledge of using computers. So these people develop uh, the viruses in order to get information from your computer or to destroy the programs and files in your computers. We have several types of software as, uh, viruses depending on what it does to your computer. And the first type of computer virus or types we have the boot sector. Viruses. And there's the name tells you. We have a boot there. You all know that to boot a computer means to open. So these are viruses that destroy the booting information. This one will destroy the booting information when the computer is starting. So mostly when you find that the computer is refusing to open or to start, these viruses, it has been affected by a virus called the boot sector, which uh, will destroy the booting process of a computer. We have the file viruses, file viruses. As the name tells you, file. You know what is a file? So a file contains related information. It can be songs, they are related. They are of the same type, so that will be a file. You can have notes that you have typed in a computer and they are all related. So that is a file and we see that a file is named with one name, it has one name. 
and uh, you can save a file, for example, in a folder. Therefore, this virus will attach itself in a file, maybe a song, it can be a document that has been typed. We have the hoax virus. Hoax, this is, this is spelling, check the spelling. Hoax viruses. They come as emails, very good email and very attractive. So you go to open an email and then you find that it has been sent as a virus. And when it attaches itself in your computer, they will start skipping from this file to another one. Mostly it will also uh, destroy the files. So the works by us mostly will come as a, uh, an email. And you find that even in an email, there are those emails that are marked as spam email. Could be your TV spam. Spam email. So when uh, they suspect, the email people when they suspect that it might be a virus, they will uh, mark it as a spam email. So mostly it will actually come as an email. We have the Trojans. Trojans. It's another type of virus, Trojans. And this one appear to perform necessary functions. You might think that it is doing very good thing in your computer, but otherwise you find it will destroy your computer. So they appear to perform necessary functions, but perform other undesirable activities in the background. So you might not realize. We have the ones of the ones. Warm by us. So we have Worms. Viruses. Warm by us is still in the computer memory. So this one will affect the hard disk. They, uh, they affect the computer memory. And then we have the battle doors. Bats doors. Last but not least. Back doors by gases. And these ones may be Trojan or war that allow hidden access to your computer. So this one will uh, make people to view what is in your computer. Sources of viruses. Support my task. Where are these viruses coming from? We have looked at one source as we are explaining, but now let us see other sources of viruses. So this one, we want to see where are these viruses coming from. So number one, we can see the email. If it can be sent to you as an email, a virus can be sent uh, in form of an email. Use of pirated software. When you talk of pirated software, uh, you have had the term piracy. So virus means somebody copied a software from uh, a source and then uh, created another software from it. It was created by a owner, but now somebody will duplicate that software and it might contain a virus. Another one is sharing storage media. Sharing storage media. Especially the external, external storage media. When you talk of external, we have the external disk, we have the flash disk. So sharing flash disk without scanning, then you might infect your computer with a virus. Another way uh, is from the internet. Internet. So visiting some sites, and especially the other sites, for example, when you watch uh, things like pornography, you might find that these are things that might bring viruses. So avoid visiting some of the sites, and especially if you are not very sure of which site you are downloading from. So those are the ways how a computer can get a virus. How do you know that a computer is infected with a virus? So ways or how do you for symptoms of a computer infected by a virus. Now, symptoms of a computer infected with viruses, we have the boot failure, 
you will try to open the computer and it refuses to open. Alternatively, it takes too long to open. Then uh, this computer might be infected by a virus. Other cause, things can cause, but that could be one reason. Another one, you have the files and program disappearing. You will save something, for example, in the desktop. Only to open your computer and then you find uh, the file or the program has disappeared. Therefore, that computer could have been infected with viruses. And that's what you hear people say, my file has been eaten by a virus. So, that is another thing. We have unfamiliar graphics or messages keeping appearing on the screen. They just pop up and then you are not requested for these messages or graphics, like a picture. But it keeps appearing on your screen when you are working with your computer. Therefore, that computer may also be affected by a virus. You have corruption of files. When you say that a file has been corrupted, if there is a difference between corruption and the program disappearing. They are kind of related, but they are different. Corruption of a file, you find that a file is there, but when you open it, it is opening something different. Not like you have saved it. I have typed something or a document in a computer only to open and then I find it has it's used uh, characters or letters that cannot be readable. You cannot be able to read. You might find even using uh, things that are looking like Chinese language or something. So that is the corruption of file. We have another one, the frequent reading through write errors. When you talk of reading and writing, you understand that this means to read is to get data from a computer. For example, when I want to transfer a document from the computer to a flash disk, it is reading. And uh, to write is to enter. So to read is to now to extract something. Sorry. To read is to extract. For example, I have a flash disk. I want to read the data from it. I want to open. Then I will say I'm reading data from the flash disk. This one now, you find that the computer infected by a virus might not open or taking too long to open a file that you want to read. To write now is to copy something from the computer and then you put, for example, to another storage media. So the computer affected by viruses could have that problem. We have program taking long to open. So it is very slow. You find the computer generally this slow. It is taking time to open the files, to read them. So then the computer could be affected by a virus. We have the gradual restarting of a computer. When you are using it, you have not asked the computer to restart, but it just switches off and then it will restart again. It starts itself. Therefore, that computer could be affected by viruses. But good to note that the other things could be the cause of what we have seen. So, not necessarily that. So, you don't just give the conclusion and say, my computer is starting because of viruses. It might not be the reason. But those are the main reasons why the computer might. Uh, might do when affected by viruses. I move to control measures against viruses. Control measures. We have the control measures from the viruses. One, you have to, it, it is good to install antivirus softwares. You know of so many antivirus softwares. You have like the Kaspersky, you have the Smart App. Look for the best. So that you will use the antivirus to scan if it is external devices or emails that you suspect. So it is good for you to install antivirus softwares in your computer. They will help protect viruses. Another one, avoid opening mail attachment that you suspect. I say even the email when it suspects that uh, it, could have it, it could be having a virus, it will mark that one as a spam email. So avoid opening the spam emails because it can cause your computer to get viruses. Backup files, this one might not protect the virus uh, as such, but it will, protect, it will help you protect your data because this data is very important and therefore most of the important data let it have a backup. Backup meaning you should have stored that file or program somewhere else as a duplicate. You duplicate a file and then you save, for example, in an external disk somewhere a flash disk so that even when the computer is infected by a virus and uh, it destroys your data you still have a copy of the same do not put your computer with the disks you don't trust so when you open the computer there is that part for example when i press f9 
it will give me an option of loading the computer with uh, a disk. And if the disk has got a virus and I load the computer with it, then that computer will uh, be affected by viruses. Avoid sharing external storage media like the flash disk, and especially if your computer does not have antivirus, because immediately you share a flash disk or hard disk, external hard disk, or any other storage media containing a virus, then that computer must be affected by a virus. And last but not least, avoid pirated software. Buy genuine software. At times you go for the pirated software because they are cheap. But now you might find that it contains a virus. That is the end. Let's meet in the next lesson.